Okay, my name is Dylan Shears. My uh, problem is on juvenile drug use. Mr. Larry Johnson, who is the Chief Juvenile Probation Officer serving Wood and Ward County, informed me that the largest issue his office currently deals with is the use of illegal substances by juveniles. Uh, truancy was the second largest issue and shoplifting was the third. The number of juveniles who are currently abusing illegal substances is continuously rising not only locally but across the country and the world as well. So the goal of this project was to examine the statistics on juvenile substance abuse, come up with some new and innovative ideas as um, ways to prevent the use of these substances by juveniles, as well as the access they have to the substances. West Virginia has recently made headlines for having some of the highest overdose rates due to mostly prescription pills and heroin. And this environment is not um, healthy to be raising children in, so we as a society must take control of the situation to create a better environment, not only for our children, for adults as well, to reduce the amount of access to drugs by juveniles and rehabilitate both adults and juveniles who are abusing illegal drugs. In modern society, many juveniles will resort to using tobacco, tobacco, alcohol, and drugs in order to either fit in or cope with problems. A 2002 report by the Quebec Institute of Statistics found that 71% of high school students had consumed alcohol during the previous year. And since in most areas you have to be 21 to purchase alcohol, this, this number is very alarming to me. The same 2002 report by the Quebec Institute of Statistics found that 42% of Quebec teenagers had used some form of legal substance within the past year. That means that nearly half of the surveyed population of juveniles in Quebec had used an illegal substance. And that too is a very alarming statistic. According to Corksmarrow, Stevens, Green, Davis, and Shallot, in 2015, more than 1.7 million youth in the United States between the ages of 12 and 17 had a substance use disorder. And uh, 1.7 million, that's, that's a large amount of um, our youth using substances. Brunel, Quisnow, and Broku define five separate stages of youth drug consumption. These are the occurrence stage, the deviant investment stage, the sequential deviant stage, the compulsion stage, and the temporary or total rehabilitation stage. These stages begin with the initial consumption of an illegal substance and can span all the way to the rehabilitation. The occurrence stage is where the drug consumption initially begins with um, occasional use of the substance. Juveniles often experiment with illegal substances due to curiosity, low self-esteem, peer pressure, or sometimes just in search of a new pleasure. The second stage in the trajectory of juvenile drug consumption, which is the deviant investment stage, refers to persistent deviant behavior without the seriousness of the drug dependency. So they have began to show more persistent use, but they have not yet developed the dependency. Third stage, which is the sequential deviant stage, is defined as regular and sometimes aggravated use, drug use and delinquency. In this stage, um, juveniles will begin to develop an addiction. And this is where they'll start to resort to whatever means necessary in order to obtain these substances. Other delinquent behaviors such as stealing will begin to accompany the substance abuse in this stage. The next stage, which is the compulsion stage, where we see the juveniles have began to develop a serious drug problem and sometimes even a full-blown addiction. Juveniles who reach this stage will begin to use more and more drugs in order to satisfy this addiction. And this is where we see a lot of the overdoses take place because they, they want more and more due to the addiction. The fifth and final stage, which is the temporary or total rehabilitation stage, is where we can identify that the juvenile has either stopped or significantly reduced their drug use. And this final stage will often occur and reoccur multiple times with the juvenile regressing back to previous stages and then working their way back to rehabilitation again. As you can see by this chart, this shows some of the top drugs among 8th and 12th graders. 
Uh, marijuana is the most popular in both grade categories. And this shows a list of drugs as well as pharmaceuticals. Synthetic marijuana is very high on the list as well. Um, tranquilizers, Vicodin, a lot of your prescription pills are very popular too. So the most common illegal substance that is used by our juveniles in recent years is marijuana. We've also seen some increases in the use of synthetic marijuana, prescription pills, and even methamphetamine and heroin. When marijuana is used by juveniles, it has been shown to reduce thinking, memory, and learning functions and affect how the brain builds connections between the areas necessary for these functions. There's also been theories linked between marijuana and memory loss, but there's not quite been enough research to back up the claim completely. Synthetic marijuana, as you can see, it, it resembles natural marijuana, but it's, um, it's a chemically formulated substance. It is made to have the appearance and the effects of natural marijuana. The two most popular street names for this substance are Spice and K2. Synthetic marijuana was formerly a legal substance across the country and can be found in most convenience stores. The legality of the substance caused its popularity, popularity to increase very fast, and the bright and colorful packaging made it very appealing to our younger juveniles and individuals. It did not take long, however, for this substance the dangers of this substance to become known. According to Lang in 2016, an April 2015 CNN report based out of New York found during a nine-day period, 160 patients across the state of New York had been rushed <coughs> to hospitals due to having adverse reactions to this substance. Howard Foreman of U.S. Health found that synthetic marijuana can contain up to 100 different chemicals. And the reaction to this substance can be hundreds of times stronger than what is experienced with natural marijuana. And without our juveniles having a proper education on this substance and what it's, what it's made of, they have no way of knowing the dangers associated with using this substance. <coughs> Methamphetamine Methamphetamine is a chemically manufactured substance as well. It contains many harmful ingredients, including battery acid, drain cleaner, lantern fuel, and antifreeze. Methamphetamine usually comes in the form of a white crystalline powder that can either be snorted, smoked, or injected. Methamphetamine can have very serious long-term effects on the body, including damage to blood vessels in the heart and brain, liver, kidney, and lung damage, severe tooth decay, <coughs> and severe brain damage that is very similar to Alzheimer's disease. Heroin is made from the resin of poppy plants, so it is not as chemically manufactured as methamphetamine, although there are additives. The resin comes from the milky sap-like opium that is removed from the pod of the poppy flower, which is then refined to make the different forms of heroin. Heroin, too, comes in the form of a white powdery substance that is usually heated into a liquid before being injected intravenously into the body. Juveniles are more susceptible to contracting blood-borne pathogens such as HIV and hepatitis because they're a lot less aware and educated on the dangers involved with using needles. Heroin also has many additives that do not dissolve completely within the body, which can lead to clogged arteries and vessels, as well as serious organ damage. Although meth and heroin use by juveniles is rare, I believe it's still important to educate them on the dangers of these substances to prevent the use in the future as they get older. The success of adult drug courts combined with the dramatic increase in juvenile drug use during the 90s caused a small number of jurisdictions to experiment with implementing drug courts to target juveniles who were caught with illegal substances. According to the Office of National Drug Control Policy, 447 juvenile drug courts were in operation as of June 30th, 2013. There are 16 strategies that are implemented and practiced by juvenile drug courts, and they are collaborative planning, teamwork, 
a clearly defined target population and eligibility criteria, judicial involvement and supervision, monitoring and evaluation, community partnerships, comprehensive treatment planning, developmentally appropriate services, gender appropriate services, cultural competence, focus on strengths, family engagement, educational linkages, drug testing, goal-oriented incentives and sanctions, and confidentiality. All of these strategies are implemented with the same idea of reaching the same end goal, which ultimately is rehabilitating the juvenile and preventing any further substance abuse. Project DARE was a very common drug education program. DARE stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It was developed by the Los Angeles Police Department in 1983 with the attitude in mind that the solution to the national drug problem was prevention instead of interdiction. DARE was most commonly introduced into the school system since this was the easiest place to gather a large number of juveniles in one place. The program usually took place over a 16-week period with instructors spending one hour per week with juveniles and educating them on the dangers involved with illegal drug use. <coughs> The program is led by police officers in a classroom setting, and they teach from kindergarten through 12th grade students on how to resist peer pressure and live drug-free lives. Although the D.A.R.E. program did have tremendous community support, there has been little empirical evidence to suggest that the program has been efficient enough to deter drug activity in juveniles. So since this program is outdated and has not yet been proven to be successful, it's time to create some new and innovative ways to educate juveniles on the dangers involved with drug use and hopefully prevent more of our juveniles from falling victim to these substances. When I was in high school, they still brought the police canine units to the schools to check for illegal substances. Students would be instructed to place their backpacks in the hallways outside of the classrooms before being locked into the classrooms until the canine would finish with its sweep of the school. The canine would check the backpacks as well as the lockers for any illegal substances. I do not believe that this is done very often anymore, and this is something that should be brought back because it's simple yet effective in combating the flow of illegal substances through our school systems. And for schools with large amounts of illegal substance activity, the canine can be brought in even once per week to help control the amount of substances that were within the school. And any student caught with an illegal substance in the school should be automatically placed into a drug treatment program as well as a community service program. Um, they usually would expel the student from school for a year, and I don't believe that that is a effective deterrent because they're missing out on a whole year of school and they're not getting the treatment that they need. Another prevention program that could be implemented would be a monthly group meeting with juveniles as well as their parents could attend. Local law enforcement could sponsor the group and send a couple of officers to lead the instruction process of the program. The program would teach juveniles and their parents together the dangers of substance abuse and how to prevent the juveniles from becoming involved with these drugs. And by including parents and making sure that they're well instructed as well, I believe we could increase our chances of preventing drug abuse by juveniles. And as a way to encourage more juveniles to attend the monthly meetings, there could be food and games that could take place after the meeting. The last idea that I came up with for a new prevention program would be very similar to the RAISE program, which for those of you that don't know who, what RAISE is, it is a program that was started in West Virginia to target tobacco use. So instead of targeting tobacco, we can have the program focus on illegal substances such as marijuana and synthetic marijuana. Students could sign up to join the group as an extracurricular activity in school, and they could work together to educate fellow students on the dangers and issues involved in substance abuse. Since juveniles listen best to their fellow peers, Allowing the students to take control of the program and manage the program with some minimal guidance from adults should yield good results. The juveniles are heavily involved and feel like they are doing something great and making a difference with their peers. I think they'll be even more motivated to get the message out and prevent future substance abuse by other juveniles.
And with some improvement, I believe DARE could um, potentially be more successful and become more widely used. It just needs kind of revamped. In conclusion, although the current statistics on juvenile substance abuse are alarmingly high, we cannot let up on our efforts to reduce and prevent the amount of juveniles who use illegal substances. Since juveniles are basically the future of our country, we have to make sure that they're on the right path to success, but if we allow them to continue to use illegal substances, they will be thrown from this path. With the implementation of these new programs, as well as some improvements to the D.A.R.E. program, we should start to see a reduction in the amount of juveniles who become involved with these illegal substances. We have to attack this abuse problem at its roots and work tirelessly to keep these substances out of our schools and prevent our juveniles from ever becoming involved with these substances in the first place.